Hey, it's Mary, and today is Cozy Saturday, and I'm really cold, so I'm all bundled up, and I've got my coffee. So let's talk about this week's Cozy Mystery. So the way that Cozy Saturday works is I'm going to talk about a cozy mystery that is brand new to me, and I'm going to give a non-spoilery review, the rating, and then I'm going to give the spoiler warning, and we're going to talk a little bit more in-depth about today's Cozy Mystery. So today's Cozy Mystery is Dogs Don't Lie by Clea Simon. So today's Cozy Mystery is the first in the Pet Noir series. It follows a animal behaviorist named Prue Marlowe who discovers one day that she has psychic abilities and these psychic abilities apply to animals. So it's like she is Dr. Doolittle but with a little bit more complications. <laughs> so she was in New York studying to become a behaviorist and then she came back to her hometown with her pet cat Wallace in tow and she and Wallace have been able to communicate telepathically although they needed some practice. So now she's trying to make her living in her hometown and she's got a few clients and ultimately she gets a lot of referrals from the local pet from the local vet. Unfortunately, at the very beginning of this mystery, she finds the body of one of her clients and the police think the dog did it. The dog's name is Lily, she's a pit bull, and so people have certain connotations that come with the reputation of a pit bull. So Prue takes it upon herself to prove that Lily the pit bull is innocent, but in doing so, she lands herself on the suspect list because who found the body? So at least this one I can go into saying, well, I knew that there was some special abilities with this one. I think the last one I was a little bit blindsided by, but this one I expected at least she would have her psychic ability. I want to say this up front because everybody should have the opportunity to decide whether or not it's something that they still want to read. Prue and Wallace do talk to each other telepathically. However, Wallace, I would not say Wallace is very PC. Mind you, Wallace is a cat. And I'm not sure if this is just really a sign of the times, but at one point in the book, Wallace does say the R word. She only says it once, but she is also kind of a bully in her own way to her own human, but their, their relationship is very endearing. She says the word once, and you know, if some people are like, hey, I don't really want to hear that stuff, so in which case, I understand maybe this book isn't the one for you. Also, I do want to give a warning that in this book there is violence. It definitely does pull more to the side of, you know, the character, the main character going into peril as she solves the mystery and domestic violence. If you do not feel like you are in the space to have something like that in a cozy mystery, something that is within the genre is supposed to be cozy. Then I understand if you wouldn't want to pick up this book. Rue, on the other hand, is an absolutely lovable character. I think one of the things that I really love about her character is that she talks about her love life, her sex life, etc. She's very candid about it. She's not at all shy about these things and she has a very healthy expression and talks about how her, you know, love and sex life have been abundant, even though she doesn't have a long-term partner. But also she really loves animals. That's why her study was to understand the behavior of animals and then to have the psychic ability has really helped her in her job. In terms of the mystery itself, I will say that there's a lot of characters that are introduced. Um, not so much in a short amount of time that you can't keep track of them. But it's just like with the amount of characters that are introduced, you kind of get 
in the space of, is this a red herring? Is this a red herring? Is, th is somebody colluding with another person? And the person who done it actually really shocked me. And the reason shocked me as well. Oh, another thing that I should mention is there is um, LGBT representation. There's two. One doesn't have that great of an ending, but I also just want to put that out there because it's meant to be a cozy, but those things may not be cozy for anybody. I also like the supporting characters in this book. A lot of them are animals, so you do get all the different ways that she can communicate with animals and how different they are and how they each help her kind of solve the mystery. So to me, I feel like it is a worthwhile read. It is an entertaining read. And I think this series has like seven books. And so the last book, when I was doing research, the last book was a couple of years ago. I don't know. I, I still feel wrong about that. Like somebody should have caught that R word. So I am going to continue with this just because this is an interesting premise to me, and I kind of want to see where it goes. And there are only seven books. So yeah. So my rating for this book was a five out of five. Like just based on the mystery itself alone, I would rate it a five out of five. So now let's go ahead and move into spoilers. So I want to talk about Lily. So Lily was rescued. Um, she was used as an illegal fighting dog, and we don't get any of that in the book like we don't get any gory scenes of that sort which i am thankful for it's just that it is just mentioned that her owner charles bought her and rescued her from that type of ring because he couldn't stand that kind of animal abuse he was like i'm gonna rescue this dog and the way that prue comes in is that because lily is a rescued dog and has been through a certain amount of trauma within her life now she has to acclimate to this new household and so unfortunately now she's being blamed for the murder of her owner and the whole thing just makes me think about crime scenes and animals at crime scenes like what happens to them like it it's really sad they hilarious it's really sad. They go through something absolutely traumatic. And in Lily's case, she's gone through something traumatic. She's trying to acclimate to her new forever home. And then that safety and security and the person who loves her is taken away. And of course, with people thinking that she is the perpetrator, her life is on the line. Like, I'm not okay with that. So I was like totally on board with, I need to see how Prue is going to get this dog off the hook. Um, finding out um, that a process that they use to test the dog versus like, because it's speculated that it's a bite, right? To the owner's neck. The way that they test that, the method that was, that was in the book to, to test that was that it, it's a method that wouldn't keep the dog alive. Um, and I was appalled. But thankfully, Prue does go out of her way to help Lily out. Oh, and another thing about the book, um, we name our pets, right? But pets have their own name. So Charles, when he adopted Lily, he actually named her Tetris. But when Prue comes in and helps Lily, she you know, is able to get the dog to tell her her actual name. So although the owner calls Lily Tetris, Lily's name that she has for herself is Lily. After I read this book, I looked at my cat Polaris. I was like, so what's your name? Like, <laughs> like he would tell me, but also I have given him a lot of nicknames and he answers sometime to just the first sound of his name like just Poe so it is absolutely possible that he is not a cat and actually a Teletubby this whole time so then we get to the issue of okay Prue is able to prove that Lily is innocent but then what happens this is a dog that has a bad reputation already because she's a pit bull people might, might ask about her previous owner and it it would then make it hard for lily to be adopted plus now she has the trauma 
of seeing someone attack Charles. So in that case, it would take someone who is really, really kind and wants to open their heart and their home to, you know, an animal that needs to heal. That then becomes another one of the issues that Prue takes on, which is to find a new loving home for Lily because she knows it's going to be extremely, extremely difficult for her to become adopted. And of course, she also has the obstacle of getting on the suspect list. If the police are like, okay, we see foul play, this was probably done by a human instead of the dog who was Frank, which Rue doesn't think about until it happens. But that's that's going to get me into my next thing, which is there is no like real introduction of a romance at this point in the story. Like there's a guy she's flirting with who's cute. There's the police officer who's in charge of the investigation who's kind of cute. Like she is just having fun with her love life. And like, honestly, I don't know how much like stock I would put into the cuteness of the police officer because the second book is called Cats Don't Shoot. And if he can't figure out that cats can't shoot a gun, I don't, I don't know how well that's going to pan out, um, to be honest. As I mentioned before, a lot of the side or supporting characters are animals and they are the pets of the clients that Prue has. So while she has clients who are very gossipy it's the animals that know the true story right so it's the animals who crew has to convince to even talk to her and dogs communicate differently from ferrets communicates differently from cats she has to like figure out how to make her ability work for each one of them and all the animals have their wonderful different personalities and it's really great. One of our LGBTQIA plus characters is one of the dogs and I don't see that as a problematic thing. If we're talking about animals communicating with them, them having their own like personality, their own mind, their own, of course they're going to have their own sexual, like I don't see a problem with that. I don't know that anybody would. Um, I don't think that it's portrayed in a derogatory way just because it happens to be an animal. Anyway, the dog is really cute. His name is Growler. And the information that Growler gives Prue is so pivotal that it turns the mystery on its head because now she has to look at it from a different angle. Everything that she knows, she's got to throw out. Now, what got my blood boiling was the reveal of the killer because the reason for the murder and everything that followed afterwards, when you get the full story of exactly what happened, oh my god, I was so mad. I was so mad. I didn't expect who the killer was. I should have, I should have known. I feel like I should have known. But truthfully, the circumstances of that particular character, I understood why I wouldn't have put stock in it immediately, especially how it's written. The author, Clea Simon, really does not give that away. And so it's really, really well crafted. And then I will say at the end, the sense of justice that I have, the thirst for justice that I have was not quenched by this book. And I understand that there's like nuance and not everything can be like immediately what you want it to be. Charles deserved better. And the forgiving is not up to me. I know that's super cryptic, but I don't want to give it all away. And so if after all the warnings, you feel like this is something you're comfortable with reading, I do recommend it. And if you watched this far, thank you so much. And I will see you next time. Bye.